Okay, I wanted to thank you. I was in the hot seat two years ago. I got the exact job I wanted to get. I'm traveling. I got the highest salary I ever got, and I just got a raise three weeks ago. Thank you for that. That's the way, and you're just scratching the surface. <laughs> My question is about love and passion. <laughs> At 17 or 18 years old, I was in love with basketball. And one day, I wasn't in love with it anymore. And I've witnessed that with certain things in my life, particularly friendships and different things that I've had interest in, like fitness and other things. And I'm wondering if that's an example of the vehicles that you were talking about. It like is. I'm using those vehicles to go different places. Yes. And, but what gets me is the fact that it's around strong emotions like love and passion. Well, we want to clarify something, but the last statement that you made here makes us understand that you've got it. And so this clarification is not so important for you, but we're going to make it anyway. So you're in love with something. You're all tuned in, tapped in, turned on crazy about it. And then one day you're not in love with it anymore. But the question that we want to ask is what are you now in love with more? Because if you fall out of love with something, it could be because you've focused upon the negative aspects of it or you've felt disappointed by it. You've just grown weary of disconnection and that disconnection is what's watered down your passion and that's why you're not in love with it. Can you hear that? Where if you're in love with something, but then you're in love with something more, it's like vehicles. So that first vehicle was so great because you were walking before that. <laughs> and then Esther will never forget slipping into that Audi R8 and what it felt like. She'd been driving a 45 foot Prevo bus towing a car behind it for 10 years. And now she's in this low profile, incredibly engineered vehicle that would do anything she wanted to do. She really felt like if she wanted to be over there, that it could leap lanes and do it. In other words, it felt so agile and her enthusiasm for that improved vehicle was enormous. But there's a difference between falling out of love with something and falling in love with something more. So of course, best thing is falling in love with something more and in love with something more and in love with something more isn't it mm -hmm. doesn't that feel like the logical path if you are an eternally evolving being and there is nothing that you cannot be or do or have and once you get a handle on that isn't it logical that things would just become more and more and more and more and more you've tapped in in your question by the direction and words in your question to what we know to be the key to living happily ever after. The words love and passion, to us they mean the same. Love is complete intertwining with source energy and passion is too. Passion is that intense sort of clarity that comes from a sustained vibrational pattern of being in vibrational compatibility with that higher vibration. And so anything that you feel passionate about is a wonderful thing, but don't ask yourself to go from zero to passion in any moment of time. Let passion and alignment be your quest or your intention and then trust that your inner being knows how to lead you there. And this is the one key of something that you might do rather than just being called and that is just decide to tune yourself to positive aspects just decide that you're going to praise more often than criticize meditate do the work that keeps you in the vicinity of your inner being and then that passion and that love will be something that is consistent and sustainable for you now there's something more we interrupted you i'm just noticing and I guess you explained about the positive aspects, just certain relationships I've kind of bounced out of. Okay. And that's just 
I guess what you said, that I'm not noticing the positive aspects as much. So I need to really focus on doing that more. But there's certain relationships I really don't want to want to have anymore. You're really going to like this conversation. Here's the thing about relationships, love interests, work interests, just general moving around with people interests. In other words, relationships. So not that long ago, Esther heard something from someone that she cares about that didn't feel good when she heard it. She knew she didn't want to hear it. She didn't think she deserved to hear it either. But there it was. And so her reaction, that's a key word, her reaction was one of pushing back, one of defensiveness, which caused more defensiveness from the other and so forth, escalated fast. And after she walked out of the setting where that was taking place, and chilled out and got a couple of days of meditation under her belt she began hearing the words it's only attraction it's only ever attraction it's always attraction it's always attraction there is no assertion it's always attraction it's always attraction it's always attraction it's always attraction and she thought crap because <laughs> it felt like she was defending something that was being asserted but when she remembered the laws of the universe that it's only attraction then she came to this sort of abrupt realization that I have to own what I'm attracting I have to own what I'm attracting so it's really interesting I'm attracting this that I don't want and then I'm defending against it so is the other person really important to the equation Aren't you doing this all the time where you're attracting because you're not deliberate and not factoring in how you feel and not caring about how you feel and then you're reacting to what you've attracted and so that launched us into a whole new delicious conversation with Esther about the difference between reacting to life and getting out ahead of it well of course you all have to do both because you can't suddenly sever every relationship you've got and stop doing the things that you do to make a living you can't just evaporate and reappear of course you're gonna have a lot of reaction to life but you can water your reaction down with getting out ahead of it you can do less reacting every day and more getting out ahead of it you can get up and meditate in the morning that gets you out ahead of it and you can make more lists of positive aspects that gets you out ahead of it and you can make more new friends that gets you out ahead of it because the new friends you don't have those negative expectations that's why you gravitate to them you see until you can reach the place that it doesn't matter who it is or what history you've had you're so current in the now that your past manifested history is irrelevant because what you're attracting now is based upon who you now are not based upon what happened and in this way every relationship can improve now does that mean that you have an assignment to a specific relationship not at all it is not your job but we know for sure that some of those relationships that didn't feel good and so you moved on from them felt good when they felt good for a reason and they could still feel good again what happens with so many people who are deliberate creations and playing with us in this way you say things like Abraham I'm sort of getting this and my life is getting better and better and better that's how you started with us my life is better and better and better and better but those people at work are so negative <laughs> and there is plenty of life to react to so what we're really asking of you is for you to define yourself for you to sort of make a decision am I a reactor or am I an actor do I act and create or do I react and create and the distinction is huge because if you're reacting you're defensive and if you're defensive you're on your own your inner being isn't feeding you impulses or is but you're not hearing them but if you're out ahead of it have you ever daydreamed something 
and felt the delicious freshness of it for most of you it's been a while you were pretty young when you were doing that the sweet nectar of tasting that energy is just beyond comparison but most people get beaten down by life because you did some of that others sort of trained it out of you it was too pie in the sky or you need to face this reality mostly because I need you to face this reality and do what I need you to do so my life will be better that's usually the motivation in all of that but oh, when you have the basis that we chewed on here today and you have that all things are possible feeling flowing through you and then you just add to that just a little more making lists of positive aspects and just a little more expecting things to turn out well and just a little more being willing for no ulterior motive reason to just see a flash of it here and a flash of it here the way you'd like it to be if you if you could if you could if you could if you could just if you could if you could just work if you could if you could if you could if you could could you feel the enthusiasm the non-physical has for the next statement that we're gonna if you could 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 just leave aside reality for a little bit and get out there where reality isn't as you know it to be and just taste this reality just for a flash here and a flash here and a flash here and a flash here and a flash here until there's a lot of continuity in what you expect to be when you start feeling those feelings of passion and love yeah those feelings of passion and love and clarity when that's what is usual for you and never mind how anybody else is reacting to you because they don't know unless they're doing it too they don't know and you're gonna look weird to them you're gonna look pie in the sky or you're gonna look delusional or you're gonna not be where they are in other words law of attraction won't match you up that much <sighs> and that's that portal that Esther felt like she went through when she was focus willing sort of trying to fix a vibration or clean it up and then realized she had done all she needed to do with that time to just let that go and dream possibilities with no need to connect the dots you see as humans you feel like you have to justify through your action everything good that comes to you and you don't because there are vibrational dots that are already connected that's why when you look at the people of the world and there are those masters of finance or money or basketball or whatever it is you can't make sense of it in terms of human endeavor or human sacrifice or human effort those are the dots that you keep trying to connect but one who's connected to this stream and consistently so is more powerful than millions who are not you see and nothing less than that will do once you've tasted that you just can't go back you can't taste it and know it and be satisfied otherwise yeah something more got it we really enjoyed this <laughs> conversation a lot a lot